Hi everyone, welcome to session 14 of uh, CIS IRM implementation preparation. So we, until now we talked about different uh, assessments which are part of RAM configuration. Next we are talking about how to build a RAM. Uh, so first we determine factors and contribution, create RAM and draft, build out assessment types and complete configuration. So what we mean is, is start off by start from here. So we first identify what are the factors and the contribution of each factor. That is that. Uh, and then we talk, when we do the assessment types based on that. So we have these assessment types, inherent control and residual. And then we publish them, then we complete the configuration here. Baseline IT risk assessment methodology details this. Uh, this applies to business apps, hardware, software IT assets, inherent risk plus impact plus likelihood. So impact, insignificant, minor, moderate, major, catastrophic. Likelihood, rare, unlikely, possible, likely, almost certain. Rating criteria conversion, zero to two, very low, three to four, low, five to nine, moderate. 10 to 16 high, 17 to 25, very high. Then you have control assessment, control effectiveness, ineffective needs improvement effective, overall control effectiveness. And then we have this translation. Then you have residual risk, which is matrix of inherent and control. RAM maintenance. So we look at this uh, example, right? Based IT assessment, IT risk assessment methodology. So I'll open this uh, risk assessment methodology. IT risk assessment. If you see the number, it says 1001. Looks like the first record that they have created. And here, if you see risk is object or uh, risk applies to asset, business application, business service, computer and server. And then you have inherent risk, control effectiveness, uh, enable risk response, residual risk. So target risk is not there. Inherent control residual risk. And if you look at uh, residual assessment, it should be a matrix. So it talks about inherent risk control effectiveness and what is the risk rating. That's your matrix and qualitative, qualitative rating rational, qualitative rating criteria, right? That's that. You have heat map, which is inherent risk and control effectiveness as your X and Y axis. Qualitative score, lookup matrix between inherent assessment and control effectiveness. This is your calculation based on inherent risk and control effectiveness. And it's qualitative. Enable heat map. That's that. That's your uh, out of the box setup. No RAM maintenance. Like who will update it or who will keep up this data? First one RAM rules and nodes. Maintenance type. Change RAM components. Components that do not impact risk score are editable. Examples. Uh, even when RAM is published. Example. Reference info. Other config options. For example, like uh, they had a reference section, so that's editable. So if I go back here, uh, let's look at this, for example, yeah. So reference info is editable, even after RAM is published. So next is uh, factor guidance can be updated. And choice field display values can be edited. So only these are available, one is uh, Reference info, other config changes, and then factor changes, 
uh, factor guidance and choice field display values. Now, if a RAM is in published state and with assessments in monitor or closed state can't be edited, so which means we cannot change the RAM state. In non fraud, if you want to do it, assessment instances should be deleted if in monitor or uh, closed state. Assessment in other states should be cancelled. In prod, a new RAM should be developed when old RAM is retired. Assessment instance will be closed. Then we have assessment instance can only be cancelled if not in monitor state. Assessments are closed when new assessments are initiated. In baseline, assessments can't be manually closed. Cancel from my assessment analytics led list. So these are the different configurations available. First is, if you have to make changes that don't impact risk score, then these are editable, like the reference info, factor guidance, choice field display values. And then once you have a published RAM, if it has uh, uh, empty, like assessments in monitor or closed state, then uh, the state of the RAM cannot be edited. Uh, so a non product if you have to do it, then we have to uh, make sure that the assessments are uh, deleted, if, which are in monitor or retired state. In other states, they should be cancelled. In fraud, a new RAM has to be created, and when you retire the old RAM, the assessment instance will be closed. Assessment instance can only be cancelled if not in monitor state, and assessments are closed with new assessments when new assessments are insured. Then next, we have setting primary RAM. Next is setting the primary RAM. Primary field on entity class is uh, used to set that. An entity can be assessed in conjunction with number of risks. Each of those risks can be assessed using different RAMs. To determine which summary appears on the entity record, system looks at primary field on the entity class record. Entity class can have only one primary RAM. We have seen this already. Primary RAM also controls life cycle of risks linked to entity. This is essentially main methodology used to report risk posture. Since risk rating is subject to assessment, we want to, uh, different stakeholders may have different perspective. It's important to capture it uh, through the use of multiple RAMs. Auditor's assessment of risk may be different from enterprise risk management perspective. In workspace, users can toggle between different RAMs to see different viewpoints. That's what we have seen here. So if you go to workspace, Go to risk workspace. We'll see that we can toggle using RAM and then we can see different perspective of risk assessment. That's that. And similarly, risk rollup configuration, rollup by entity and by risk statement. Risk rollup is displayed as an aggregate and it displays in format defined in RAM. Summary info can be find can be found in set of aggregated reports. Detailed info can be found on risk statement and on entity reports. So that's that. Uh, RAM configuration object-based assessment. So it's event-driven ad hoc. Users can perform the assessment. Users can perform the assessment reaction based on some event. Set RAM assessment context to object, identify table to object, create your action, create your action assessment, and then share it from your action. So this is we're talking about a use case where if you have to do RAM through your action, what do you do? Uh, then we have we have this uh, APIs, create risk assessment, get to risk assessment results, two APIs. So we can use flow designer or business to leverage APIs. It is also possible to do risk assessment through trigger-based risk assessment. So let's look at this scripts here, the APIs, and see what they are. So here we have this API. I'm, I'm guessing this is the right one, but I will confirm back uh, if that's not the one. Yeah, but basically they're talking about using two APIs and uh, and also leverage load in another way possible. Right? Risk evaluation and treatment. So advanced risk assessment lifecycle. Assessment type state matches RAM definition. Ready to assess assessment types, respond, awaiting approval, monitor, and the roles needed are all this. 
So let's look at assessment record. Here, let's look at assessment. So let's look at this dashboard operational risk assessment management. And so here we can see over here where we have a uh, number of high residual tasks, number of NFG controls, and so on. Uh, and you have risk control assessments. Residual risk by category, inherent risk by category. And you have a heat map, risk response by residual rating, inherent risk trend, and so on. So if you drill down into any of them, there are risk response tasks. You have risk events and control assurance, indicator performance, issues, and library. So, this is your operational risk management, and you have Look at this one, advanced risk assessment, and see what is there. Again, which this we can group based on RAM, as you can see. Critical residual risk on ex upcoming ac uh, acceptance due dates. And then you have inherent uh, risk rating trend, all of that. If we change this to enterprise, we have all this uh, risk rating. So this is a risk assessment. So let's look at the life cycle here. You have draft. Okay, this is your risk. You need to go to assessment of this risk. So it has all the states. First is ready to assess. And, and then you have inherent assessment, control assessment, residual assessment. Then you have respond, then you have awaiting approval, then you have monitor. And then you have a due date, you have risk, risk description, owner, and you have assessment summary, inherent risk, control effectiveness, residual risk, computer values when overridden, uh, has an approver who has done it, and then uh, risk appetite, inherent assessment, uh, residual assessment, risk response, activity channel, all of that. And then you also see risk events, risk indicators, open issues, risk response task, upward workflow, Approach all of that. So this is a sample risk assessment record. So it says uh, it can only be done in next experience. So let's look at that. So here you can see that uh, it starts like this and you have an option to reassess. So if I click on reassess, you can see that you can change the assessor type, approver type and so on, request assessment.
view assessment. So you have inherent assessment residual target and risk response. Uh, so let's see. an option to reassess. So I'll click on reassess. And if you go back to risk details, we can see the details here. Risk hierarchy, previous risk assessment, risk appetite, and so on. Activity log. And, and everything else, right? So if I go back to risk assessment home, you can also see the approvals for this. You can also check the inherent residual and target risk. And then if you click on view assessment, we can see the assessment that is done. So if you try reassessing again, uh, so let's request assessment. Yeah. So it needs to be done as that persona. That's why it is not letting me do it. But yeah, that is that. So that is about the risk assessment through workspace. And state is monitor. Then you have risk record workflow with ARA. So risk, risk progresses to state based on risk assessment outcome from primary RAM. Draft, assess, respond, monitor, retired. That's your life cycle. So let's try to navigate to risk from this. So we'll open risk details here. And go to risk, RK, as your prefix. And we have details here, such as uh, state and draft, assess, respond, monitor, retired. Uh, so the RAM drives the state of risk. So assess comes into play when uh, Advanced assessment is initiated and being performed. So then you have a response state when risk response is task is in progress. Okay, we don't have anything here. And then monitor state when uh, risk has been assessed and response task is closed. So let's submit for review. This is static review. So let's see what this feature offers for risk. So you can see it applies to one entity, one risk statement, one risk assessment. And There is owner category, all of that, right? So let's click on monitors to take it into monitor state. Now risk treatment. So ready to assess assessment types, respond everything up to monitor. Response value determines the type of risk that gets assigned to risk response task. Risk response records are manually created while the risk is in response state. Accept, mitigate, avoid, transfer, four options. Risk response life cycle. So the 
response value. So this drives the uh, response task type. So. Yeah, so basically this is the workspace from where we can do the risk assessment and all of that, right? But uh, next we talk about uh, risk treatment. Let's look at tasks. I'm going to do the risk assessment from here. So let's populate all this and save it. Next, we move to control assessment. So here we have option, option to add some controls or inherit common controls. So let's skip this for now. And more to residual. I can just skip it. And next, more to residual assessment. So next. Next, we define risk response. We want to accept it, let's say, and then confirm. Review and submit. Request approval, submit. Now if you look at the risk, you'll see that the state should get updated, updated based on this. So now it's an assess state and uh, the risk response task, if you see, it, we have, it should have a accept task because we have accepted the risk. And then we look at the life cycle of this risk response task. It's in draft. Uh, let's remove attachments for now and look at details. Can move to work in progress first and then take it forward all the way to closure. Request up because we are accepting it, we need to request approvals. Uh, please accept. And okay, some more fields need to be filled in. Acceptance end date, like two days from now. And then we can close it. So this should change the risk state automatically. Let's look at the risk. Uh, so still that's an assess. Uh, Okay, it looks at only active true, so if I remove this, then we should see everything, but basically, yeah. So that is that, and go to overview.
right? So we have seen how to handle the response task, the life cycle, right? Uh, so, but it says risk response workflow is not available for object assessment. So baseline my approach model is not available for use with approved user role. So four risk tables extend as and risk advanced task and all, all of them basically. Risk integrations. So if you want to leverage advanced risk assessment engine, then you can do all of that uh, through integrations. So let's talk about that in the next video.